Mm-hmm. It's good to be with the people of Asia this morning. Asa palu cheta ve ko ya no vugete ge komoda ve shai bo ta chimu ve yo hale ja. No, we're losing people. We just lost two people, I think. Ai fita ni ga ko me kai lo le lai ma da ve ko. Okay, well, maybe they'll get back on. Okay, we are in we are in Romans chapter 6. Nga hu chi bu ka ga le yo ma le kana ko ko lo jeng hu che a si ve yo. You know, I am uh, I'm teaching Romans also to to some pastors in a church in India. India mu milo che ta ve ti chang sala te pha ka yo ma li chi ta nga ma pi che ve yo. And um, Romans has been a very enlightening book for them. It seems like the church in India is, is uh, still following the old covenant. India mu milo cho ve chi chong ya de pa ko yo hule eh ta ti sa cha o pi le vi da jao vi they're locked into old traditions and teachings that have kept the country back as far as this, their spiritual maturity eh bo ko ye yo hu ah o ta cho mo tu ta yo hu te la ve te li te ka so now that they are learning about the true gospel that Paul taught, they're coming into a freedom, but it's hard for them. Because they have to release, let go of the old so that they can grab hold of and receive the new. That's why we are taking our time and we're going verse by verse so that we can renew the mind to lay hold of the new covenant. Yeah, you have joined the class late. I hope that you'll be able to understand what we're going to be talking about. I recommend that you read the first uh, six chapters of Romans. Take your time, study it. And if you have any questions, any questions, we will be glad to answer those questions. So last week we we stopped in in verse 20 of chapter 6. So today we'll start with verse 21. What we have been talking about is baptism. Again, when I said the word baptism, you probably thought about water baptism. 
This whole chapter talks about baptism, but it never once mentions about water. Baptism actually starts with a decision on your part. It's a decision to die to yourself, die to the selfish ambitions, and come to a place of zero in your selfish desires. Christ died to himself before he went to the cross. Even in the last day of his life on the earth, he was he was still dying to himself. The, the ultimate death that Jesus did was the death on the cross, a physical death. But that, but that physical death would have no value if he didn't die to himself before he went to the cross. The last battle that he had with his own flesh, his own selfish ambition, was found in the Garden of Gethsemane before he was arrested. He and his disciples had just eaten the Last Supper, and they went out to the garden so that Jesus could pray. Jesus took three of his most intimate disciples with him to a remote place of the garden, and he started to pray. And in that prayer, he was beseeching God for himself. And that, that request that he was making was, Father, if there be another way, let this cup pass from me. In these words, we can see the last element of self-preservation. Within Christ, he didn't want to die. Ole Mutini, Jomo Yishu, Yobe Asati, Kayo, Toyo Vitanga, Nivetanta, Yoka, Masu Gavitara Moviu. And he was asking God, Father, is there another way? Can this be done in a different way? 
Three different occasions he prayed this same request to Father while he was in the garden. And then at the very last of the third time, it was revealed to him, this is the Father's will. Or the, using my own words. It's like God is saying to his son, son, there is no other way. This is my will. So Jesus had to die at that moment, at that very moment when he said, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus as the example, Jesus as the forerunner, he shows us exactly what we must do. To be identified with Christ in his death means you walk the same path that he walked. You too have got to come to a place where you say, not my will, but your will be done. Okay, I come to zero desire. I come to zero ambition. I surrender my will to you. That is your death that you must take upon yourself. You have to die to yourself. But if you will come to that place, Jesus came to that place and he rendered all, even until death upon a cross. Mm. It was in that death that God could raise him in resurrection life. If Jesus did not decide to die, there would be no resurrection life. The power, the power of the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead will also raise you from your dead, um, 
your dead uh, self, and he will give you resurrection life. Ah, je me suis so tant que tu l'as piloté, tu as pas eu chave au hafu, chave campacho, n'a eu le aluta, n'a eu le pilote, n'a eu le zéro pebio, tu as eu aluta, tu as eu le aluta, tu as eu le pilote, tu as eu le hafu, tu as eu le campacho, tu as eu le pilote, tu as eu le pilote. That's the power of the Holy Spirit working in you to bring you into a life of pure um, influence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Okay, David gave you all half no cook, chair lavitian, no get the get chair lavitian ta, no ta amate, get the lavily cook that gave a lay, a teach over your chitipa. Now, you know, in my own life, before I was born again, before I died, I didn't live for God. I did things back then that I just thought was normal. I just thought, well, this is my desire. This is what I want to do. And today, after knowing the will of God, I'm ashamed. Of what I did. Yeah, Nico, who shall open a shave alu tanga silavitianta, O tanga asa pitave, O tanga titave, or chitipa tako, don't you with ya, ya po jave you. Look at verse 21, it says, Therefore, what benefit were you then deriving from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the outcome of those things is death. Now this death that this verse is talking about is a separation from God. So those, those things that I did before I knew the will of God, before I surrendered to his will, today I, I'm, I'm ashamed of them. I, I even hate to talk about them. I don't talk about them because that is another man. That is an old man that is now dead. I have been born again. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now let's look at verse 22. But now... Having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, let's let's look at that just for a minute. Can you read that part, or Ali, just that part, if oh, yes. if you can pull that from. Now that first part of that verse says that it is very possible. And every new believer should be free from sin. Free from sin. Uh, 
Sin will no longer be your master. Now, here's a question, and this is for, for Jaya, Jaya, so that she can understand what we're talking about. <clears throat> how, how can you be free from sin? If it's possible, how can you get there? Look at verse 7. Let's go back up to verse 7 of chapter 6. Look at verse 7. What does it say? Verse 7. 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 He that is dead is free from sin. Again, I've got to reiterate that you must come to zero in your desires, in your passions, in your ambitions, zero. Zero. <laughs> You have to lay your ambitions of life down on the altar so that it will be dead. You've got to lay your career down. You have to die. Yeah, you your career, your job, your, your profession. You have to lay your family down. You you have to lay your money down. You have to lay down all those desires that is prompting you to, to act in, in a way that is contrary to God's will. If it's pornography, you have to lay it down. If it's adultery, you have to lay it down. You cannot maintain your desire for these things. One day up in Illinois in the United States, I was in a conference and I was trying to cast out a demon out of a young lady which was, who was a witch. Ah. United States conference. 
She loved to control and manipulate people. I don't know how to say in Lahu. She was controlled by a spirit, an evil spirit. And that spirit had placed in her a desire to seduce the pastor of the church. Because she knew that she could bring him down if she would seduce him and get him to fall into a sexual relationship with her. Ah. She confessed to me this wasn't the first time she had done this before. Uh, I'm sorry? She confessed to me that this wasn't the first time, but she had a history of uh. seduction of pastors to make them fall. Uh. Destroy the, the pastor, the sheep will scatter. I'm sorry? Destroy the pastor, the, the shepherd. And the sheep will scatter. I confronted her about this. I confronted her very strongly about um, the wickedness, the, the spirit that was driving her. Mm. And I told her, you must repent of these things. And she, she turned to me and she said, you are asking me to repent of something that is so natural to me as if it was my right leg attached. I cannot do that. You see, she was enjoying, she was enjoying the seduction. She was enjoying the, the, uh, the, um, the, the spirit. She, she liked that demon. I could not cast that demon out because that demon was her best friend. And that's the same thing with sin. If, if the sin is your best friend and you don't want to, to turn from it, you will never turn from it. 
you will never die. You have got to come to a place in your life where you no longer desire to sin. No longer. And you have to come to a place where you release it and come to zero with that desire, that passion that's within you. Okay, what I'm talking about is a decision on your part to come and release that to God. You decide to die to that sin. You decide to die to that sin. Knowing, now here's the difference, knowing that Jesus Christ is going to do a work within you by the power of the Holy Spirit to change that desire. No, don't know. It's not a New Year's resolution. It's a death. Uh. Now here's the key. If you will die, you have then the power of the Holy Spirit through resurrection life inside of you, changing you to become the image of Jesus Christ. Ah, no we aluta no supi love ko da we ke bi o ha fusha no we asa ti ko kolo lo la le kan ti la le no ta pe mi pa we ta ti ti la le le ah jo mo yi su kre ka su su pe la tu po no le pe la tu bi yo. So going back to verse 22 of of Romans 6 it says but now having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit, resulting in what? Sanctification. And the outcome of that sanctification? Eternal life. Mm. So, in this verse, we see a progression taking place. You must die to be free from sin. Number three is very important. You must become enslaved to God. 
You see, that's what Jesus did when he says, not my will, but your will be done. That's the center of my life now, your will. So when you become enslaved to God and he becomes your focal point, his will becomes your will, something happens. Yeah. What is the benefit? What is the result? Sanctification. Okay, Nahule. Sanctification means a setting apart to God. Sanctification means a you set it apart, or God sets this apart and claims it holy for him. It's a process of him sanctifying your life. It's renewing of your life to holiness, to his will. Sanctifying. Uh, Sanctification is a result of God's resurrection power working on the inside of you. It is God. Doing the work. Your part is to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, to surrender and cooperate and allow him to do his work within you. You can't change yourself. God changes you from the inside out. Like I said, this is a process. I have changed, but I am continuing to change. But one thing that is consistent is that my heart seeks the will of God. And so what is the outcome of sanctification? I'm sorry? What is the result? What is the outcome of sanctification? Eternal life. 
Eternal life cannot be obtained without that process being done. Verse 23, for the wages or the payment of sin is death. I'm sorry, is, is that from Romans chapter 6? 623. 623. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's a free gift. You can't do it. You can't earn it. It's something that God and only God can do. And that is exactly why he sent Jesus Christ. To set you free from sin, set you free from the law, which we're going to get into next. Surely we have some questions or some comments that want to be made here after these three verses. Anyone have a question or a comment that they would like to make? Nothing. Hey, sir. Ngakati ah ah kula gavio. Ya pua ngati ju ah salayo mavio kulo oga gaja vicho. Ah ngaku asyoka vi oso sabe alu tipa ah magaso topo ngaku ah ngaku ka ngaku vi alu okolo ngaku ah halle vi tapatole ngaku so magaku vi tauga gavio. <laughs> I'm I'm so encouraged uh, about that you taught tonight. What uh, that is that people cannot change because of uh, because of being enjoying with the saints. Kego su deti mahi linga ka puta bi oya oklo ya pua salayo ma vi thaga ka tha nga don tha nga be. อ่าเคยอยากจะติดกลัวกลัวกันอ่าไลฟ์พอเลยอ่าอ่าเตยเชเวอจิโอคลูงากะซอกะกะอ่ามัตติกะกะอ่าเตยมะกาวิเชอ
reserving our workers on the Kaimaga Rita, Godono uh, Lario. In the past time, as you talked tonight, I was being like and the one who is enjoying doing things in the past time. So that's because of being happy doing the things. That's why I cannot escape from the things. So that's what I remember tonight. So if I want to escape, be free from things, I have to die my will to be zero. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. Thank you, Ken. That was very good. Very good. Um, yes. I know that uh, you have rivers in your country, but do you have any lakes? Any ponds? Yeah, I'm going to go. No, 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 do you have any? Yes. Yes. Yes, we, okay. we have. All right. Let's let's do an illustration. I'm going to draw something on the board. And maybe it will help you. Let's say that I have on my property some a lake a pond uh, it is beautiful water crystal clear cold a lot of fish a lot of plant life in it beautiful water what if my neighbor, my, my neighbor that lives right next door, builds a factory? And from that factory, he releases a contaminant into my water and he pollutes my water. Okay, company My water is no longer clear and crystal clean. Now it is contaminated. What must I do? To, to bring my water back to clarity and pureness again. What must I do? Number one, I have to decide to act. I have to come to a place where I look at my water and I say, I don't want that. I want crystal clear water. You see, there's a lot of people that never come to that point of decision in their life where they don't like being where they're at. They actually get accustomed to that pollutant. They get in, in, uh, 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 accustomed to, to um, a bad lifestyle. Company Colotile Yala Chevy Capucho, Atomata Sotema Lavali, Goku Manda, we asked the car, Ta Malachevy, you see, can it go put you? So, what is the, the second thing that I must do to have clear water? All of the Matico, 
ti ka chi da ke la to po te tu nga ga do che vi ni ma te ma tu ko a thuma le che a thuma ti chi do vele number 2 i've got to cut the influence into my water nga ve ka ru ko ko lo lo la che o che ka pu thang nga ga to ba vi ga to ba vi na le ma ga lo la to po nga ga te vi ga to ba tu I've got to go to my neighbor and I've got to sue him and make him stop putting that pollutant into my wa- into my water. Then I'll park it every or she park it kaile. Now we put kolumalu la tu ponga racha kopi to you. So that has got to end. No more, no more connection with the pollutant. Ove komedia koloma da ve lo la ya la ve ikka che kapwe nga ve po kolo te po magalo la to po nga ko pipo. Then what I have to do? Is my water clear? Oko oke che je tu vila. Oke magalo la to po ko le le cha ko pipo ti an ta yo ka magalo la to po te la ve ya ka. Ove o ta kolo che ti nga maga je. Oke che je ve ko no, my water is not clear. It is still polluted, even though I do not have the influence coming into my life. There has got to be fresh water brought in to my my pond my lake fresh water clean water na we go pu kholo cho we ikka le chi da la ke la le ni kha so lo lo tu phe la tu chi ho da ke we ikka thang ga ke tu lo vi and as the fresh water comes in the polluted water will leave this process is only through the Holy Spirit can happen. This can happen. Okay, Okay, Truth has got to come in and expel the error. Renew also the life of God comes into you and gives life to a dead body of water. So tawe ika ma dawe ika chita te la tu da la tu opo da kevi ika ralu la ve o da kevi ka ko cho da ve kevi o ha fu ka te vi ta u chevi So it is not enough just to stop the influence Company ko te le ika ma dawe ya la ve chita to ba ve cheti te vi cho ma bi lo si there has to be a renewing of your life, a renewing of your mind. And through a process of renovation, your body of water becomes clear and clean again. Okay, le da te vi ka te palu la pilo tai. Le rupo kolu to vi ika te pa da la ke la vi ka su. Nga hu ka o ha fu sa ka te vi ta ha yu le chi a le te vi ko nga hu vi to ka nga hu ni ma si ka. Da vi o che ka bi cho la te vi yo. What if you never stop the influence? You never put a stop to it. It's still coming into your life and coming into your life. Over time, no matter what, much you buy, we go. Kataka, 
Ngupo kolo lu lave kashushu ngave doka ngave ni masho kolo kaka taka lu lachetu vyu. But you go to church, you read the word, you hear the preachings, you sing, you clap. You have an influence coming into your good influence, but it isn't enough. No boya kaive futako ve lek le fu wo ve bolo ve chita cheti tele ma da ve ochite patano ma chi ba ve ko chile bilo la. No, it will never be enough. As long as, as long as you're receiving an influence, it will never get clear. It will never be renewed. So, you must one make a decision. I am done with this. I'm not going to do this. I want God more than I want that sin. Number two, I have to cut that influence. If it's pornography, you no longer look at it. If it's adultery, you no longer see that person. Whatever it is, you no longer allow that influence into your life. Then you must surrender. You must open the gate and allow God to bring in new, fresh water into your life. The Holy Spirit. I hope you understood that illustration. Mm-hmm. We're out of time, but uh, if anybody has a comment they'd like to make, I would, I would enjoy hearing it. I do have a comment, of course. Okay, okay. Good. Uh, this is this is for my personal. This happened many years ago. I used to be a new junkie, political junkie, and I got upset watching news you know when thing doesn't go the way i think it should go i got really upset go ahead Ali. so i stopped watching tv Completely. And I listen to preaching God word. I listen, I read the Bible. I consume with the thing of God and not allow the TV, the world to influence my thinking.
the more I spend time with the word of God, praying the Holy Spirit, the more I love God. I mean, you don't have to force it or anything, you know, by renewing the mind, you falling in love with God more and more every day. The goodness of God, the love of God, the relationship, you know, just to think that God who creating all things, who creating all the universe, spend time with you, talking to you, have a fellowship with you, that is just more than anything the world could ever offer. Mm-hmm. But it does take time, you know, when you cut off the bad thing in your life, that's just a, it doesn't happen, you know, it, you're not going to fall in love with God right away, but you have to renew your mind. That's the process of cleaning. When you're cleaning, you know, and then you have to fill the empty spot with the goodness of God, <coughs> love of God. Oha le oha ni ve chong ha nga opo te chi obo ma cho lo ko ve ta si le oha ma ni le che ba ve che ti ma he o ke che ba ve che ti o chong nga opo da la ve o chi te chi cho tu ma he ya ka o ve ta ma ni le nga ve cho ha u la da la ji la tu nga ve do ka da la ke la tu nga ve ni ma ta ka nu nu ne ne pe la tu opo te ko Amen. Good comment. Appreciate that, Tawi. Thank you. Uh, let me pray for you. Father, I pray for the people of Asia and I ask God that they would receive this revelation. That out of death comes resurrection life. Help us come to a place where we just will not entertain these sinful thoughts and desires in our lives no more. We surrender it to Jesus Christ. And with faith, we know that you are going to do a work within us. Let them be free from sin. And enslaved to God. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, we will thank continue. You so much.